All right, everyone, welcome to lecture 6-1. Now we're going to talk about some of the development of the vertebral column and how uh, that associates with the spinal cord uh, and the myotomes and dermatomes and how those are formed. So remember, we're talking about the embryo and its formation of mesoderm and the neural tube. So here we have uh, an image of that uh, embryo at about day um, uh, mid week three uh, to late week three before the rostral and caudal neuropores have closed. We can see along the back portion of that embryo bumps all along where its vertebral column will form. And those bumps are called somites. Uh, so if we look down into uh, those structures, we can see the somites are actually the result of the paraxial mesoderm uh, as it's forming around the notochord. So remember during uh, the process of gastrulation, uh, we have created this middle layer, the mesoderm of tissue, uh, and um, uh, the notochord has formed from some of that mesoderm uh, and that notochord is producing signals to create the neural groove and the neural tube. Uh, so on either side of that neural tube as it forms, we have a bulge of mesoderm called the paraxial mesoderm. So the tissue that makes up the somite is called paraxial mesoderm, but the bump on the exterior of the embryo is called a somite. The other portions of the mesoderm uh, become different structures. We'll talk about some of those later but the uh, lateral mesoderm is particularly important because it forms some of the body wall, especially this dorsal portion here, whereas the ventral portion will form part of the heart and the aorta, basically the circulatory system as a whole. Um, <clears throat> as we uh, move on, we can see that that paraxial mesoderm is going to begin to differentiate into different structures uh, and different portions. Uh, all of those structures are going to have some function on the axial portion of the embryo. So we can see here uh, in this uh, nice pink color uh, indicating the sclerotome. The sclerotome is the name of the term for the uh, different components of the skeletal system. So it's the developmental term for the portions of the skeleton that are deriving from the paraxial mesoderm. The uh, blue portion here in the middle is the myotome. That's going to turn into the muscle tissue of both the axial skeleton and the limbs. So it's going to form portions of the uh, epimere and the hypomere, as we'll see in a later slide. And of course, we also have a dermatome. So the dermatome is going to form the dermis of the skin where the, um, the uh, sensory receptors are going to arborize. Uh, so you can imagine that the neural crest cells are migrating from the top of the neural tube uh, to form the dorsal root ganglia and extending their peripheral process toward the dermatome. So the dermatome is attracting that peripheral process through release of morphogens. In a similar way, the myotome is going to attract the lower motor neurons from within the neural tube to extend their axon so that the, uh, the muscle fiber cells will be innervated. <clears throat> so here we can see the formation of the sclerotome. In the next few slides, those, uh, those sclerotome uh, cells are going to begin to migrate toward the notochord surrounding it and the neural tube. Uh, so eventually becoming the uh, presumptive bone model for the vertebrae. Here we can see the arch of the vertebrae, the lamina and the pedicle will form, and the vertebral body surrounding the, uh, uh, the notochord, which will end up becoming part of the vertebral disc. <clears throat> so as those cells die off, they take shape. The, the structure of the bone model takes shape. Uh, so here we have kind of a lateral view of a, a drawing of this process happening and how the neural tube, here labeled spinal cord, is going to send its uh, projections out of that uh, bone model, that vertebral bone model. So we can see here on the right individually colored somites. 
So these are the uh, portions of the paraxial mesoderm sclerotome uh, that are basically uh, forming along the embryo and are in the way of these neurons as they're projecting out toward the periphery. So we have a number of different somites uh, up into the head region. Most of those degenerate. We have some other somites uh, down in the tail region past the coccyx that eventually uh, deteriorate uh, because we, we don't have tails. Uh, but uh, at any rate, one of the consequences of this process is that the spinal nerves, as they exit the neural tube, the spinal cord, are going to split the somites. They're going to split the, uh, the different paraxial mesoderm sclerotomes. So that portions of the occipital, the last occipital sclerotome, and the first cervical sclerotome are going to merge into the ultimate bones that are formed as the vertebrae on, and the occipital bone. So have, uh, portions of each, uh, each somite are going to be divided by the nerves. One of the consequences of this uh, results in how we number the spinal nerves. You'll remember from one of the first lectures that the first spinal nerve exits above the C1 vertebrae. Well, we can see here that the first spinal nerve is between the occipital bone and the first C1 vertebrae. And if you, if you count down and continue this process, you'll realize that we have to put in an eighth cervical spinal nerve below the C7 vertebrae, but there's no C8 vertebrae. We just go right into the thoracic vertebrae. So that's a consequence of this division that occurs during development. <clears throat> so uh, now uh, moving on to the dermatome of the paraxial somites, we can see that that dermatome is going to migrate toward the posterior body wall, toward the axial portion. So that dermatome uh, is going to form uh, the deep portions, uh, form along the deep portion of the ectoderm. Uh, to make the dermis of the skin. Uh, so that will contribute to the dermis of the skin everywhere in the body, uh, including the limbs and the anterior body wall, uh, eventually everywhere except for the head, which has a specialized uh, developmental structure. Now looking at the myotome, we can see that the myotome is going to split. Some of it will migrate um, dorsally and some of it will migrate ventrally. And, and some of that ventral migration is going to end up entering the limb buds. So that's why we call the uh, dorsal migration of muscle cells the epimere uh, or epaxial muscles. And the ventral migration is the hypomere or the hypaxial back muscles because it's going below the axis formed by the neural tube. Uh, so. Here we can see how uh, the apaxial uh, back muscles are forming in relation to the hypaxial muscles of the anterior body wall and the limbs. And uh, so you can take a look at some of these slides uh, and get a better sense of uh, how these uh, different structures uh, come of consequence. And so we already talked about limb bud formation and how that happens. So you can get a little bit more idea about how the hypomere migrates into the limb buds uh, in these extra slides uh, as well. Uh, so thanks for watching.